This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad 13, uh, 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 not just that, Chromebook. Yep, there is now a ThinkPad 13 Chromebook, and it does share a lot of the DNA with the regular ThinkPad 13, which is a Windows laptop, but this one has, typically speaking, a lot of lower-end specs inside, though surprisingly high-end specs are available as Chromebooks go. The challenge with this 13.3-inch, uh, this is a kind of a Chrome for work initiative that Google is doing is it's a lot of money for a Chromebook. So far, Chromebooks have taken off in part because they're inexpensive. You have either the variety of inexpensive models. If you pay a bit more, you get a better display, a little better CPU, that sort of thing. And, you know, the all by itself Google's own pixel for the people who want the designer looking nice one. So this is a kind of somewhere in between. And the challenge is, as configured, it can get pretty expensive. Our top of the line model is $850. Now it does have just about some of the same spe specs as a similarly priced ThinkPad 13 running Windows, but it actually has lower end storage and some other things. We'll talk about that in detail. But it does start at a more reasonable 429 list. Typically that's around $385 on Lenovo's website since their list prices are only suggestions, shall we say. So then you do get a Chromebook for adults, right? It's not one of the plasticky, cheap looking ones. It's 13.3 inches, so it's actually a usable screen size and a pretty good keyboard. I'm gonna look at it now. The Chromebook weighs 3.2 pounds. That's reasonably light, actually, for a 13-inch laptop. It meets mil-spec tests, 810G, uh, like 12 tests for ruggedness, dust intrusion, moisture, all that sort of thing. Not something you see every day on a Chromebook, actually, is it? You have three CPU options. Most unusual, you can get a Core i3-6100U, that's Skylake generation, or a Core i5-6300U. You can max it out with 8 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of eMMC storage. That's akin to um, a permanently installed SD card in terms of performance. But that brings the price up to around 850 which is kind of crazy for a Chromebook. If you just want to go up to the Core i3, which I could understand if you want to run a lot, a lot, a lot of Chrome tabs, that's only $130 on top of the 380 base price. It's available with 4 gigs of RAM, DDR3, which is fine for a Chromebook, or 8, which is kind of madness for a Chromebook at this point, 16 or 32 gigs of that eMMC storage. It has stereo speakers, and they're some of the most anemic we've ever heard. Super thin and tinny and not terribly loud, down firing. Port selection is decent. You know, Chromebooks often do have a decent port selection, though, but what's really interesting here is two USB-C ports, 3.1, so it works with USB-C docks. It supports charging. In fact, this one here has a charging symbol next to it too because the charger is USB-C based. So keep that in mind. And also, I know that some of you get confused about this, but if you have a USB-C phone charger, there's a reason why it's a lot tinier than your laptop's charger. They don't always put up put out sufficient power to charge a 45 watt laptop. So I, don't expect your phone's charger to work with these, but if you pick up a 12 inch MacBook charger or HP Spectre charge or something like that, then it will work. Then they're interchangeable. A little confusion caused by USB-C. A lot of confusion, in fact. And we have a regular USB 3.0 port there and our combo mic and headphone jack and a lock slot. And on the other side, we have ventilation here, especially because this is available with, well, Core i3 and i5 CPUs as well as the Celeron. This actually does need active cooling, which means a fan, but it's Chrome OS. You're not really going to hear the fan a lot. It, it's pretty hard to overwork a Chrome OS machine. I suppose if you opened up 20 web pages at once and had YouTube playing in half of them, yeah, then you could get a little hot and steamy. And there's a full-size SD card slot. The keyboard is 100% ThinkPad. It's every bit as good as, well, the ThinkPad 13 non-Chromebook version, though obviously you're not going to have things like a Windows key here or your FN key. It, it, they, Lenovo actually does do a decent amount of changing up here. The motherboard's also been changed inside as well. So, nice, nice key travel. If we pick this up, notice that it does open flat to 180 degrees. But see, it's good. It's good stuff, and, and it has that nice, satisfying kind of feel, damped keys. Trackpad here is fine. It's also very good. You know, usually with Chromebooks, it's hard to find a bad trackpad, and ThinkPads generally never have bad trackpads. Obviously, it's a buttonless model. It works perfectly fine, and one thing I want to point out is there is no track point, no red eraser stick pointer embedded up here. I know even Lenovo's specs page still has some confusing information there where they list it as having that. It does not have the track point. There are two display options, just like with the regular ThinkPad 13 running Windows. You have your 1366 by 768 
or the 1920 by 1080 display, display, which is what we have. The 1366 by 768 is just a TN panel, no IPS. So you're going to have, you know, less than ideal viewing angles. And it's only 50 bucks to move up to the full HD display. I'd say it's totally, totally worth it. It's better for your eyes. You're going to enjoy it more. Either way, you're only getting 220 nits of brightness. That is not terribly bright. We are running it at max brightness right now, in case you're wondering. Uh, but if for indoor use, it works out. And because it is a matte display, glare is not an issue there. So you don't have to combat glare. And as we turn it, you can see the viewing angles are pretty good. This is not a super top dollar IPS display. Uh, you know, Lenovo generally doesn't in have the highest end displays, and especially Chromebooks don't. But it's pretty darn decent. Black levels are okay. You can even see here the Huawei phone is looking closer to black. So anything dark crushes out the black pretty easily. Also, in part, a factor of the dis display is mm, just eh, okay brightness, which is actually on par with a lot of competing Chromebooks. But the HP Chromebook 13 and the Dell Chromebook 13 do better, especially also in terms of color gamut. They have pretty wide color gamut. This one does not. This is about 65% of sRGB only. So, mm, you know, it, it's very Chromebooky, shall we say, in that way, because poor Chromebooks often don't get the best of displays. But then again, for something that potentially runs anywhere from almost $400 up to $850, when you're looking at the $850 model, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more color gamut. This is a Chromebook, so you don't install programs EXE style like you would in Windows or the kind of programs you would install in Mac OS. Everything that you run is really just based in the web. The apps that you download are really web extensions here. Even if you're looking at the system profile information, you're going to use the web browser to do that. That is life of Chrome OS. The good part is it's very simple. You just really can't screw this machine up. And it's pretty secure too. Security on Chrome OS has been good, which is one of the reasons why I think Google is now pushing a work or business initiative here. So you get simplicity. You get instant on. If you close this, and I'm going to put it to sleep, watch how fast this thing wakes up. There it is. So you got an instant on experience that you used to think you can only get on mobile phones and mobile OS tablets. So that's the good part there. Uh, the other good part is you really don't need a lot of RAM or even a super fast CPU because you pretty much you're just running a web browser all the time. Even if you got yourself five, ten tabs open, an Intel Celeron 1.6 gigahertz, which is a base model with four gigs of RAM, is absolutely pretty good. But if you're a super duper power user here, there is that Core i3 option and obviously the Core i5 that we have, which is honestly overkill for Chrome OS right now. And we have eight gigs of RAM, DDR3. Now the motherboard inside of here, this is quite different from the ThinkPad 13 Windows machine. And you can take this apart if you want. You can remove the Phillips head screws and then it's pretty easy. There are three hidden under these little rubber feet right there. And you have access to almost nothing upgradable. You have access to the battery inside and the wireless card is socketed. And this is an Intel 7265 dual band card. So it's not exactly the highest end card. Maybe you would like to upgrade that, but there is no pair of RAM slots, which we saw in the ThinkPad 13. There's no M2 SSD slot. There's only that eMMC storage, which I'll throw in a picture of the motherboard so you can see it. Uh, but there is not even a socket that I can see for the eMMC storage. I suspect it's on the other side of the motherboard, so you have to unscrew the motherboard to get to that if you want to add more of that kind of storage. Chromebooks typically have good life, and there's no exception here. Let me tell you, this has very good battery life, and we have the Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM, which should have the worst battery mileage, so to speak. Plus, we have the full HD display. So this is the maximal power-consuming configuration. And the 3-cell 42-watt-hour battery just doesn't want to give up. We average 8 to 9 hours of use. And that's why the display brightness set to about two-thirds of maximum because, you know, it's not a very bright display. I really would not want to operate this on 40% unless I was sitting in a dark room. If you went with the Celeron or the Core i3 and the more reasonable 4 gigs of RAM, you should get even longer. I wouldn't be surprised if you hit double digits with this. It's quite good. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad 13 Chromebook. Again, I, if you're looking for something that has the ergonomics of a ThinkPad with a good keyboard, and you actually have some pretty decent display options here, 
really nice keyboard and I said keyboard is good on this and uh, you know more performance available if you want to spend the money then you get on a lot of Chromebooks that are still running on Intel Celerons you know below the core i3 range even there uh, the the only challenge is it is kind of expensive it might be more than some folks are looking to spend for a Chromebook the only gotcha is no touchscreen option here. And now that we have Android apps on Chrome OS just starting out, we did a video demoing that. Uh, it's a little harder to use Android apps if you can't actually use a touchscreen. You know what I mean? But uh, maybe because this one aims maybe a little bit more towards business users. They don't want you playing around with Android apps. I don't know. Maybe the, the future there will be touchscreen option. But for now, there isn't. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.